Thank you very much, uh, uh, Business World, Avani, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. I feel women are very, very creative force, no matter which society we are in. And that creative force is probably missing the due place which they need to have. But if economy needs a boost, this creative force needs to take a center stage. And until and unless this creative force takes the center stage, the economy cannot really get the boost we are looking for. So whether it is Skill India, it's Make in India, to more employment generation opportunity, to 9 to 10% GDP, which I'm looking at, uh, you need this workforce to join hands with the men folk. And when I say join hands, not necessarily mean that uh, the time and the schedules have to be identical. In fact, uh, I was just quoting an example from Karnataka, and which sets actually the uh, right paradigm as to how we need to operate these systems. Uh, when Karnataka was booming in terms of uh, uh, industrialization, more jobs, not just IT sector, but all over, there was a feel-good factor. At that time, women uh, who, were, who used to work in the industrial sector approached the government and said, we want amendment to the laws. Because under the Factory Act, they could not get an employment in the evening hours. They had to be, they could only do morning shifts. Um, and they fought that hard battle. And the logic behind was that we want to work late nights. Why do we want to work late nights? Because early in the morning, we can send our children to school. Uh, we can go off to sleep. By afternoon, we get up, we cook food, we manage our children. Evenings, when our husbands come home to take over the family responsibilities, after we've cooked the evening meal, that's the time we can leave for work. So we need a late night employment, and the government actually tweaked the rules. Because so many women were employed and industry needed them, and they were doing two shifts, one in the morning, one in the evening. Morning shifts, usually men would come for work. Evening shifts, women will come for work. And then to and fro transport used to be provided because I think safety and security of women is a major concern in every society across the world. And I think the only impediment, because whenever people discuss empowerment of women, empowerment of women, I am someone who looks down upon such concepts and contexts because I personally feel women are pretty empowered. They know exactly how to make their life. They know exactly what to do. They are very, very wise women who run the family to business to everything else. The only thing one needs to be concerned about as a society, as business people, as any sensitive human being is their safety and security. So once you give them safety and security and you nurture their talent, they will manage everything in life. They will just leave them alone. They will do whatever it needs. Look after the family, look after the business, look after the staff, go, come back, drive. They'll do everything because they're good at multitasking. So only thing one needs to be concerned about is safety and security. And when I discuss safety and security, it comes uh, with a, a huge sense of pain because the way we are getting painted all over the world and I'm, I'm, making, I'm taking it to a detoured position, but I thought uh, it's a nice way of interacting with friends because everyone in this audience is a wise person, is literate and understands uh, many things, but somewhere the messaging is not going right. And uh, the messaging, I, from, from my side, the message I want to convey, uh, especially when someone like me who has, uh, who has been concerned for the cause of women, has done ample work in this field, uh, worked uh, with uh, victims of sexual assault, and uh, worked for the freedom of press when press was denied uh, entry into the trial court while covering uh, Nirbhaya's case. I was the one who fought that case to get the press into the uh, halls. Uh, after all that service one did to one's service, one is being painted as some horrible government, 
which is banning things for the sake of banning. The entire debate loses the color as to the sequence of event. And since I am amongst the well-meaning audience, literate audience, I think the communication needs to be complete. And in this communication, I must bring one point forward, that is this the first movie on this subject? No. Many documentaries have been made on this subject. Yes or no? Yeah. How many times we have discussed this subject? Endlessly. Was there ever a ban? What caused the ban? Please pause. What caused the ban? Huh? No. No. Approvals. Somebody comes from outside the country, violates the terms of the visa, violates the undertaking which she had to give to the authorities in jail, which is a high security jail, stating that this is for social cause and it is not for commercial cause. Now, if it was meant to be for commercial cause, I think I could give it to business world, let business world sell it across the world, make some money and part with me, isn't it? Why would I give it to BBC? or some assassin firms. It was meant to be a study project. It was not supposed to be a commercial undertaking. One. Two, it's a high security jail. In the high security jail, the undertaking which was given was that unedited version of the entire shoot will be handed, it to, handed to the authorities. Because you're shooting inside a high security zone. Which country will permit this permission? Where do you get the permission to shoot inside a high security zone? I mean, can I, can I shoot the insides of Washington DC? Or Pentagon? Or jail? Manhattan? Where in the world will this permission be given? And once you've given an undertaking, that unedited version will be given. The unedited version needs to be given. All those who relate to me, because uh, in the sense that we as Indians have a different sense of uh, social mores. So 354 section was amended after Nirbhaya case. And we brought in a change. We fought very hard to bring in a change where we made a new law called voyeurism. The depicting women in certain ways or discussing certain subjects at a pl public platform falls within the premise of voyeurism. In this particular case, uh, a person is discussing in detail how he did, what he did, and what all happened. It falls within the limit of voyeurism. Any ordinary sane person, I don't think anybody is interested in knowing what he did and how he did. Are we interested? I think it's enough. For me, the truth is only one truth, that a young woman died and she was brutally murdered. That's more than enough. That truth is more than enough for me as a person and we all as a society, because we all condemn such acts. We hate it. But if there is any second side to the story, that second side to the story has to be before the court in the courtroom, not for the public. Voyeurism is an offense. But in detail, in great detail, it is sh spoken and it's shown. Two people, one about a five-year-old, the other about 23-year-old. And in a very patronizing way, she goes to say, daughter's, uh, India's daughter. I actually wanted to tweet this morning and I restrained myself. I say, you know, if I look at the numbers of rapes happening in UK, happening in US, happening in the EU, we are far better. Both in total numbers and also in percentage and also the time frame. Now, who's speaking for those ladies? So I wanted to say, I want to adopt the
and we in any case are a big family all of us enjoy big family all of us you know ye meri beti jaisi hai ye meri mom jaisi hai ye meri aunty hai we, we all enjoy that so i don't mind being one to many who don't get the voice in their own country but i restrain myself i say you know once you are in the position that i'm in every word you say will be taken out of context and some other stories across the world will get woven so i said forget it uh, but uh, somebody did tweet this morning britain's daughter and i retweeted that and it talked about the great numbers the rate of rape in those societies is close to 28 and 27% and 30% in you and the conviction rates are far lower conviction rate in india is 46 point some odd percent there it is 26 odd percent or less so this kind of globalization of my misery i'm not saying we are 120 25 crore odd people we fought a very hard battle post nirbhaya we brought death penalty to this country for these offenses we tweaked 354 we all protested by millions on the in, on india gate lawns there is a collective sense of hatred for such crimes now you underplay that and you say oh not just a rotten apple but the entire barrel is rotten give an interview to a newspaper here and say it's a sick society these kind of generalization obviously hurt a person like me who feel uh, who take pride in who they are who are very proud of the kind of work they do uh, who look at the system and use the system for the betterment of social setups and who understand the layers within which my society operates i can i can guarantee that anyone in this audience if i go forward and i quietly say that look here is a girl who's been molested need to help i don't think anyone in this audience will say no it simply people will just come out pouring okay what can i do i mean you want me to send some clothes you want me to send some food you want me to uh, give employment I, that, that's the kind of goodwill this society has for each other we are very warm people that's the strength we have so underplaying all the strength and always globally maligning me is something i hate because i think i we are a very very strong country and we are a very very morally correct society we are a correct society we have our set of problems and those problems we are capable of handling because i have full faith in the gray cells this country has and we have a plenty of course there are people who cause misdemeanors who who do the wrong things i have a set of problems in my country which is uh, from poverty to uh sexual exploitation to trafficking all kinds of things but society at large is very sensitive one third men in britain say women are responsible for the rapes which happen to them so are we going to call brightons as a debauch society if not how do you call the entire barrel being rotten of course we have wrong people but we are we are very very strong to fight those wrongs and we we take a lot of pride in correcting systems so it is in this context that uh, i was very hit up with this whole episode and uh, i wanted to sort of communicate that everyone is discussing the ban that they should be you know doing the ban was a wrong thing as a government when you discuss ease of doing business ease of doing business also means the undertakings you undertake you are supposed to comply with them you can't have a banana republic where people can come out go wherever they wish to not comply with the laws do nothing and keep changing their stance only for the commercial exploitation 
that can't be permitted. Certainly not at the cost of my daughters and my society and my brothers. And we are all together in this fight. All men and women are together in this fight. As we saw when protests were going on at India Gate, everyone was on the streets. It was not a cause exclusive to women, but men, women, children, everyone was there. Uh, moving on from this subject to the skill and entrepreneurship, I think half the problems which exist in my country are because of lack of uh, you know, education and things, and which all boils down to uh, financial aspects. Because I don't think I've come across even the most poor of the poor people in this country or will give up on their children. They do few things because there is no financial security. So until and unless women, men who are able, who are capable, come out and employ, and greater opportunity for employment exists, so skill India to make in India, greater number of jobs, better social well-being, economic well-being, healthcare, education, everything can be looked after because end of the day, everything boils down to numbers and numbers in terms of your GDP, in terms of the money in your pockets, in terms of earning capacities. And once we are able to overcome that part, there is no stopping. There is no stopping. And whenever economy does better, if you see the numbers, whenever economy does better, the gender parity is better for the simple reason more and more women come out to work and more, and more and more employment opportunities exist. Whenever economy is doing bad, women are the first ones to be laid off in any scenario. And then they take on the jobs like looking after the house, bringing up the children, uh, caring for the elderly. So they go into shell and they go into homemakers category. Now, the moment homemakers need to come out, the economy needs to get the requisite boom. And that boom cannot come until unless the workforce, the skilled, the unskilled, everyone comes together to better the economy. So skill India, make in India, safety of women, easy loans, uh, availability of funds, again, for startups, I think, a, a huge uh, sum has been set aside. And I wish a certain percentage goes to the women, and government is already working on that lobby. And I think uh, in Gujarat, uh, Anandi Ben did something fantastic. She brought out an entire industrial belt exclusive to women. So uh, I guess more chief ministers need to uh, take this forward. And any other suggestion which this group may want to send to me, I will forward it to the required ministry and take it forward, whichever format, whether it's zero hour notice, 193, whatever. So we, we, we can, um, I, I can be your voice inside the parliament for policy changes, if at all there is required to be one. Thank you, thank you, friends. Thank you very much. <laughs>